everybody. Let's simulate a series RLC circuit. So I already put some values here for a resistor, inductor, capacitor. These are all in series. Now let's get a source in here. Let's use a clock source, and it should be a voltage source, so clock voltage. I'll just drop it in right there. And let's just go with an amplitude of 1 volt and a frequency of 100 hertz. Just based on these values of RLC, I kind of know what to expect for the response. So 100 hertz would be kind of an appropriate frequency for what we have. Okay, and now let's measure the voltage across the source, which means if I put a probe, let's see, over here, I need the reference to be on the other side of that voltage source. And then I also want to measure the voltage of the capacitor, which means I really need the voltage source and the capacitor to share the same reference ground. So that way I can just put one probe here for the source and one probe here for the capacitor, right? Because they're each measuring voltage with respect to this reference here. Okay, um, let's see, I think we can run it. Okay, so for simulation, choose this interactive. That's the one that just runs continuously. Okay, let's start it. Okay, so here we go. Um, and then here on the right side in grapher, you see how my cursor is near the vertical axis. So if you move your, like scroll your mouse wheel, you can change the scale. So our just kind of whatever scale looks good to your eye. And then the horizontal axis, you can change the scale. So we're going to look at two periods worth. Okay, now what will happen if I change the value of the resistor? Okay, so if I go, so already this is overdamped, right? If I decrease the resistance, look at what happens. Still overdamped, but as I decrease the value, it settles quicker. And then, look, if I go maybe too low, of a resistance, then we get an underdamped response. See like that? Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. So this is the natural response over here. This is the step response over here. All right. So then underdamped, and then as we now increase the resistance, see what happens. It then go becomes overdamped. And at some point, there's some value where it's kind of in between being underdamped and overdamped, right? So it's right where it's not having any overshoot, right? Because like this, the response is kind of going our step response is one volt, but it's going over that one volt and kind of bouncing around and settling. So there's some value where it's kind of right in between, critically damped. And you can solve for that numerically, right? Where the neighbor frequency is equal to the undamped natural frequency. But then here we can determine it experimentally just by kind of adjusting the value like this. And basically, this is an exercise so you get a feel for how the circuit responds to changes in these values. And then I think the one that you should get accustomed to is how the resistance changes. And then you can always play around with what if you change the inductor? What if you change the capacitor? It has different effects. Okay. And then as an engineer, um, you might be asked to design a circuit that responds in a certain way that the client needs. So for example, you say, um, let me zoom in. Like say you have a project where I need this response to settle to one volt, let's say plus or minus 5% within some specified amount of time. Right, so you see how 
This takes longer to settle. This is settling quicker. And then if I do this, right, let's see, that actually settles, let's say, to within 5% pretty quickly, like over here. But at the the trade-off is it's going past the voltage that I wanted. And in some designs, maybe that's totally fine. But in some designs, maybe you have design parameters where that's not okay, where you don't want to go past. So then you have something more like this, right? So it's not going over, but it still takes longer to settle than if I were to just have a little bit of overshoot like that and then look how quickly it settles. So then that's the trade-off. There's overshoot, but it settles quicker. Or there is no overshoot, but it just takes longer to settle. And those are just design decisions based on what you need for your project. Okay, so hope that was helpful. Give this a try. I'll see you on the next video.